I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you on my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, a sweet sound in your ears. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul. Rejoice, so take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, a sweet sound in your ear, in your ear, in your ears. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I lift my voice because I love you, Lord. I lift my voice to worship you on my, my soul, on my soul. Father, we adore you. We magnify you. We glorify you on this day. And Lord, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your mercy. Your mercy endures forever and ever and ever to eternity. Lord, have your way in this here, your place. Now you get the glory. You get all the honor. You get all of the praise. And we thank you. We adore you. We love you. We magnify you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen and amen. We thank you for broadcasting and coming in and viewing with us on our show. Do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made well? Do you want to get better? Do you want to be made well? Do you want to keep getting better and better? every day, every minute, every hour, every second. And all the glory and the praise belongs to him. So we can't forget to give the one that gives us the source to get it better, to make it better. And his name is Jesus. So Lord, we thank you and we glorify you. We bless your name. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Again, we thank God again for his love, his kindness, and his mercy. Thanking the Lord for his goodness and for all that he's done and all that he's going to do and continue to do in the lives of his people. I want to bring to your attention, uh, coming from the book of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, just looking at one verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15, just that one verse. And it says, those who are spiritual can evaluate all things. 
but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things, but they themselves cannot be evaluated. But they themselves cannot be evaluated. And I want to talk to you for a moment from the subject self-evaluation, self-evaluation. If there's anybody today, anybody on planet Earth that can begin to look at themselves and to begin to evaluate themselves, the checklist, you know, when people talk about the checklist, check, checking the list off and checking it twice. Well, if anybody can begin to look at themselves and then begin to bring a self uh, accurate evaluation of themselves, it's nobody, none other than Christian men and women themselves. I'll say it again. If anyone can begin to look at themselves and bring an accurate self-evaluation of themselves, it's nobody else other than the, the Christian man and the Christian woman. And that's what the Bible says. It talks about being, it talks about us evaluating ourselves. Why does the Bible talk about evaluating ourselves? Why does the Bible talk about evaluating even in general? Well, one of the things that I think is so important for every man and every woman is to always begin to look at oneself and to begin to give one a self-evaluation, looking at where we are with ourselves and looking at where we're going, looking at what we're saying and looking at what we're not saying, looking at our deeds and looking at if our deeds are godly or if our deeds are ungodly. Those are all of the self-evaluation that we need to take upon ourselves to look at ourselves as evaluation. Hey, if you don't look at yourself, if you don't evaluate yourself, then who's going to evaluate you anyways? You, it's your responsibility, it's my responsibility to begin to take a self-evaluation of ourselves. And who and how does this whole thing work? It works with through the one that lives, the greater one that lives on the inside of you. You see, the Holy Spirit is the one that begins to make a he begins to check, do the checklist, the checklist and checking out things, checking out what you said right or what you said wrong or how you did this and how you did that. It's the Holy Spirit. He begins to give us the evaluation. He begins to let us know that we can begin to upgrade ourselves, upgrade ourselves from a, a dying to the flesh and becoming brand new in the things of God and making sure that we begin to look at ourselves so that we can evaluate ourselves in coming up and being the man of God, the woman of God that you are. And so what, do we, what does the Holy Spirit do? See, in the Bible, in the Bible, it talks about um, the flesh and it talks about the spirit. It talks about the flesh, the Bible, it talks about the spirit of God, which basically we are, you are, men and women of God, Christians, you're a spirit that live in a body that possess a soul. A spirit with a body that possess a soul. So these components are three components, spirit, body, and soul. 
all three separate entities, but yet one body, one person. And so what we're looking at, what we're looking at, and that is that there's times when we aren't aware of who's operating inside of us, who's operating through us. Um, and what God began to show me concerning our Christian walk and the Lord began to show me and he said, Frank, you know what? You can begin to learn and understand when dealing with situations and circumstances all through life, all through life as to who's operating through you. Who's operating through you? Yes, God began to reveal to me and showing me that, Frank, you can begin through life situations and circumstances, you can begin to evaluate your life through life situations and how you handle it, how you handled it, whether if it was through your flesh or whether if it was through the spirit. Now, if things went through the, if things, you work things out through your flesh, then the picture of you working through your flesh, it wasn't, it's not going to, it can never be a good picture. Why? Because the Lord said there's nothing good. Paul said there's nothing good that lies within our flesh. So when we begin to operate and live our life through our flesh, our flesh basically is selfish. Our flesh basically wants it to be fed. Our flesh only thinks about itself. But on the other hand, the spirit basically wants to be a blessing. The Bible talks about all of the qualities that the spirit possess. And it also speaks about the many qualities that the flesh possess. So we need to understand right off the bat that nothing let nothing good lies within our flesh. Nothing good lies within our flesh. So what's your point? If you see a person swearing, cursing, frustrated, angry, mad, cussing, swearing, cutting, shooting, fighting, doing whatever, adultery, drugs, alcohol, that right there will help a person to identify with themselves and saying to themselves, hey, I'm operating right through my flesh. If you see a man and a woman together arguing and fighting, you already know that that person, those two individuals are operating through their flesh. So why is that important? We need to be able to take a look at ourselves so that we can see who's operating in us. Why? So we can, hey, so we can remove the old and bring in the new. And we need to know the scriptures, know the Bible. So again, if there's anybody that can begin to evaluate the things from within ourselves, it says it right there in 15, we'll read it again. Those who are spiritual can evaluate. Hey, because you're spiritual, because you live by the Spirit of God, because the Spirit of God lives in you, you have the ability to evaluate in what's operating through you at any given time. You can, you have that ability. You have that quality. Can I say it one more time? You have the ability to evaluate at any given time in your life, whether going through complex situations, whether going through wonderful situations, whether going through good times or going through bad, you have the ability to evaluate and to say to yourself, to your own self, who is operating through you, your flesh or your spirit? 
Well, I need to let you know this. It's important that we get on top of things in our life so that we can begin to know, hey, who's reigning more? Who's, who's gaining more ground? Who's, hey, who's more stronger? And that's the question I want to ask you. Who's stronger in you, your flesh or is it your spirit? Do you know that? Who's more dominant in you? Is it your flesh or is it your spirit? Well, I've always said the one that you feed the most, meaning if you feed your flesh the most and don't feed your spirit or you feed it very little, then it's sure, it's understandable what's the strongest, the dominance. So the spirit will be weaker and the flesh will be more dominant in one's life. So therefore, since the flesh uh, can be stronger in a person's life th than the spirit, then that person will begin to operate in the realm of the fleshly realm, feeding the flesh, or let's say the manifestations of the flesh. And let's go there. We're going to go there. The Bible talks about it talks about a hey, how we can begin to see the manifestation. What are the manifestations of the flesh and what are the manifestations of the spirit? We need to know this. Why? So, hey, so you can know what's operating on the inside of you. I need to know what's operating on the inside of me. Why? Because when I start acting ugly, I need to understand, hey, that's the spirit of the flesh. And why is that important? So I can begin to nail it and get it out of me so that I can do the will, so that you can do the will of the Father who sent you. Understand this. It's impossible to be able to do what God wants you to do if the flesh is going to begin to do what it wants to do. If the flesh is going to show its head, if it's going to manifest itself, if it's going to do what it wants to do and go where it wants to go and say what it wants to say. Hey, who's running this show? Is it the spirit or is it the flesh within you? Which one? The one you feed the most. Which one are you feeding the most? In the book of Galatians, in the book of Galatians, it talks about those things in regards to the flesh and to the spirit. Galatians chapter 5, beginning at verse uh, 19. Galatians 5, beginning at verse 19. And it says in Galatians 5, 19, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature. In other words, when you follow the desires of your flesh, the results, the results, see, here we go. The results of following your flesh, they're very, it's very clear. It's just saying there's no, there's no beating around the bush. You can see it, it manifests. And the thing that I want to bring before I even um, mention these, and that is that you have the ability to abolish, to get rid of any of those of these things that we're going to name that ha that basically that tries to manifest itself. And that is it says your sinful flesh uh, uh, basically shows itself by the manifestations of sexual immorality, sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorceries. I'm going to put my finger right there and stop. And why is it good to name these things? Why? Because these things that get us in a lot of trouble. These things, these few that I just mentioned, a sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, je jealousy. Do you know that these things have broken, destroyed 
families, have destroyed marriages, and are destroying marriages right now today? So if a marriage is going to hold on, if a marriage is going to survive, if a man and a woman is going to be married for 40, 50, 60 years, if individuals are going to survive from their relationship and just dating right now and perhaps go into marriage, then these things can't be a part of the marriage. I always say before I, well, I do, we do, my wife and I, we do marriage counseling and we talk about these things and making sure that these things are dealt with before they get married. Why? Because if they're not taken care of, it's going to be a lot of smoke up in there, up in there. There's going to be a lot of problems, a lot of issues. And that's why these things can't just be not, just not looked at. And just going right into marriage. Some marriages today, a lot of marriages today, they, these things are prevalent. They're there and they're not even they're not even concerned with them. They look at these things as they deal with them as life go on. But again, hey, you evaluate your life. You become the better person. You become the better woman. You become the better man. Hey, we make sure we got deodorant on. We make sure we brush our teeth in the morning. We make sure we wash our face in the morning. We make sure we get in the shower and do all those things. We make sure we got clean socks and clean underclothes on. We do all that. How much more? How much more? Is it that we make sure that what's inside of us hey, is the right stuff? Because what's inside of me, what hurts, what hurts, hey, what hurts them will hurt me. What hurts me will hurt them. What hurts my family will hurt me. What hurts me will hurt my family. And many right now, they're tired of bringing shame on themselves. They want to, it's time to bring joy. It's time to bring happiness. That's not all we know how to bring to people is sadness. It's just saying, that, well, I did my best. We can do a lot better than what we're doing. We don't have to, they don't have to be committing adultery. They don't have to be committing fornication. We don't have to be drunkenness and having wild parties and sinning and doing stuff that we shouldn't, shouldn't be doing. We don't have to do those things. Why? Because the end result, it's hurting God. The end result, hey, self-evaluation. If, if you don't self-evaluate yourself and I don't self-evaluate, then who's going to do it then? Then it's just going to be a lot of confusion, a lot of chaos. I was just looking at uh, individuals, I'm not going to name them, but I was just looking at individuals on TV, on the news the other day. Individuals uh, having relationship with other women and forcing other women to have relationship with them. That, that right there is, hey, that hurts. The individual that did this, basically he hurt his family and he hurt himself and he hurt all the other people around him that love and care about him. See, sin, sin basically, hey, it's, it's fun when it starts, but after sin basically has no, it, it, it don't never come to the point of saying that I had enough. Sin always wants more and more and more and sin is never satisfied. It just keeps on ticking and it keeps on ticking and it just takes a licking and just keeps on ticking. That's what it, it just, and it brings, hey, and it brings death. Well, what are you saying? I'm saying, hey, uh, the wages of sin is death. So what that means is that when we basically cut ourselves, when we do stuff that we shouldn't be doing, sinning, we cut ourselves away from God. And if we cut ourselves away from God, who do we open ourselves up to? Who? Satan. And Satan, we know, is the God of this world. He, God put him in charge when the fall came about with Adam and Eve. And then that allowed Satan now, say, did you know Satan is running the world? He's running the media. 
He's running, he's running every, sit, every sitcom, every major uh, institution, every, he just, he got authority on the earth. He has been given it from Adam, throwing it away. And he's running it amok. He's running things amok. So self-evaluation is going to help us to become better. We got to look at ourselves and pay more attention to ourselves at what we're doing. Why? So we can get better. Water's warm at Jaws Pond, and we're stocked full of treasures. Big or small, we buy it all. We buy and sell fast rides, power tools, vintage guitars, and so much more. Walk the plank in style with our fine jewelry, diamonds, and watches. Plus, we have a huge selection of the latest video games, including the new PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Jaws Pond, conveniently located on Meriden Waterbury Turnpike in Southington and West Main Street in New Britain.